All right. <clears throat> so, um, anybody that's in the you know that's in the mod team or the the staff or whatever is free to jump up and and participate. Uh, welcome, welcome. You guys are allowed to raise your hand to, to speak. Um, listen, as you go forward this week, you are you are more than welcome to try to to try to ask me any questions or just you know say hey or whatever the hell you want to do while I'm here because I'm going to be here all week. I would really recommend um, if you do get to interact with me, please be please 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 be aware that there's plenty of people in here that would also like to interact and be a part of the community. I'm heavily encouraging every single one of you to raise your hand at some point or another, even if it's just to say fucking hey i appreciate this or whatever just say hey man because you guys paid a lot of money to be here um and you know we want to make sure that people feel welcomed like i going in the beginning of the announcements i made it very clear that like we don't want toxicity in here we want people to feel like they're part of this league can be a pretty toxic game i know i can be an asshole from time to time when playing it but at the end of the day when we do events like these we really want to try to get away from that that attitude and make sure that everybody's chilling welcome welcome uh, I have a question. Sure. If I wanted to make something like a, a little document to uh, improve as a support, what would be good uh, stuff to put in it? Like maybe some good warning spots, matchup guides for myself, maybe builds. Uh, that's a pretty big picture question. It depends. What elo are you? I am currently cruising through silver. So you're this cruising through season, silver. Actually. Yeah, I have a... I'm, I'm a pretty big, uh, I have like 59% win rate. That what are you, my what's, first what's your main, what's play, your main champion? Play. Uh, right now it's Karma. I kind of swap between Karma, Lulu, Soraka, and Nami. I, like well, well first picks. of all, what I would tell you is, um, I want to give you like actionable stuff. Like a lot of the stuff with like warning spots you can find very, very easily if you just look around on YouTube. We'll probably have plenty of people with supports. I know Ray Scat's in here. I don't know if we have any other support coaches in here or not, but I know Ray's here for sure. He can tell you all about good warning spots. But the big thing that I would tell you of the champions that you named, I would 100% just main Lulu in solo queue. Uh, if okay. I could give you, if I could give you the reasons why, it would just be of the ones that you named, right? Of the champions that you just named. The reason why is because Lulu's probably your most flexible champion. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna basically stop you from becoming the the classic support with like no mechanical ability at all. I know people like to flame Lulu players a lot, but there's actually a lot of like flexibility that goes into a kit like Lulu's, right? You've got a lot of range. Uh, impact that you can have on fights with picks you have you have the all you have the polymorph which is super fucking annoying i play a ton of bruiser champions lulu's probably the scariest champion that you can run into when you're playing uh carry tops like i would much rather run into like you said a soraka uh, i'd much rather run into a karma than a fucking lulu because i know the lulu can actually empower somebody to carry the game whereas like yeah soraka can heal her team a lot and that's annoying but like i don't think there's any champion in the game that can just like follow around to carry and just kind of win um and again i think there's just more uh there's more there's a higher skill ceiling i think on lulu um overall so that's what i would probably look at maining now for like the other thing that i focus on is support and by the way guys i'm going to be moving through these people quick don't take it personally the other thing that I would say for support specifically is you need to be very, very comfortable pinging what you're going to do, okay? Both ADCs and supports need to hear this, and I'm going to be saying it a lot this week. But when you play bot lane, um, it's very easy to just kind of like throw up your hands all the time and say like, oh, this fucking ADC doesn't do what I want, or this support doesn't do what I want. And if you go back to the VOD and you didn't ping what you wanted them to do, like if you didn't ping them, and, and they like make the wrong play, then you're like half at fault is the best way I could frame it, okay? Right, quick question. How shit of a pick is Sedwani right now? Depends, what, what role are you playing? Jungle. I, I don't think Jungle she's main, shit at all. Silver, uh, gold, level. The Max Soul, is that how you pronounce your name? Is he in here, Challenger Belveth? Did I say his name right? Demax. Demax, Demax yeah. Oh, Demax, got it. Yes, I am here. D what do you think about Sedge? I think Sedge is fine, personally. What elo are you, McGraw? Silver gold. Uh, you can get to diamond with Sejuani. I don't think there's any debate about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, jungle, jungle specific, uh, specifically, is just a little bit weak in a top lane right now. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say, I would, like say I would agree. Yeah. Best blind picks top lane. Uh, the the weakness about her jungling in general, why you like never see her in high elo at all, is mostly just because she's she's a little bit slow throughout the jungle. The meta right now is very heavily based around like early ganks because 
for example, the average time of how fast like games end in Challenger is like around 22 and a half minutes right now. And it's mostly based on the laners getting a lead, like two kills to an ADC, and it's it's mostly one. Yeah, so, it's a game so over. I would say, I would say, I would yeah. say overall if it depends on what your goal is right if your goal is to reach like diamond there's absolutely nothing wrong with sejuani jungle right like you could uh, I, I could hop on with sejuani jungle right now and just just do a full clear yeah, and yeah. probably actually i don't even know if you need to full clear you could probably just like three camp with sejuani get a gank like every game and then snowball the game from there and you could probably do that to diamond but if you want to go beyond diamond i agree like demex is right like sejuani is not really a pick that you want to run and you can't like duo abuse anymore pat like once you get to masters you're locked into playing solo queue it's not a good look to take sejuani every game because you're just going to wind up kind of being sad when games don't go your way early. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Good, thanks. I've been watching the content for a while. Me and my girlfriend still yell E at each other from that one talent video. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I wanted to ask, you had in your earlier boot camps, you said you had a goal every time you went in. What's mm -hmm. this boot camp's big overarching goal? Oh, my big overarching goal for this boot camp is to hopefully... Honestly, I just want you guys to have a good time. Um, we have ran this thing for how long? A fawn? About a year, I think. Roughly. Yeah, this is a year now. Yeah, I think I just got hired this time last year. Aww. Yeah, we yeah. we just wanted to end on a really good event and kind of show that like these events are awesome. Um, we put a lot of heart and soul into them. Obviously, we're probably not going to keep doing them after this. Um, but we just. Honestly, I just want to make sure that everybody's here that, that, that came out here that that basically trusted us that spent their money and, and trusted us to do this type of thing uh, is happy with what they see. Right. And we're hoping that you see the amount of coaches. We're hoping that you see the amount of events. Uh, we're hoping that you see the cool uh, the missions that we put together, the lectures that you put that we put together and everybody sees like, oh, this is really like an e-convention. That's all I want, man. Like, you know, a lot of my fans here without getting too emotional, like a lot of my fans have given me a really cool opportunity to do this job and i just never want to be seen as somebody who didn't try to do cool things with the opportunity i'm a pretty introverted person so this takes a lot out of me and i just want to make sure that everybody that comes to these is like is happy you know that's all i really really care about because i know it's a trade like you're spending your money like i know you guys like will actually do like a real job and come out here um and to, to hang out and play league and i just want to make your day better and and make the game more enjoyable you know what i mean yeah yo how's it going uh, so about, I guess, a year and a half ago, I got a coaching from you on support. Okay. And with this uh, boot camp, I'm committing myself to switching to top. Oh, cool. Um, That's fun. So I'm curious. Um, so I previously, I got your coaching on Zyra and previously I made from bronze to gold after your nice. coaching on Zyra brand. So I'm curious, moving to top from support, what champions would you recommend? Uh, it depends. Like, there's all sorts of options. Like, Garen's my go-to usually as a recommendation just because he teaches you a lot about what good top laners need to do, which is mostly, like, survive a lot of abuse, make a really decisive all-in, take your lead and just start working the map right and like split pushing is usually a pretty good is a pretty good answer you can have a little bit more brain dead tops that don't have quite as much mobility in their kit um you said you played zyra a really good alternative option for like a zyra player and no offense i'm 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 just i'm making broad stroke assumptions like i imagine you're not a very mechanical player a good pick for you then and and trust me when i say this garen doesn't sound mechanical either until you actually start running around the map and doing like crazy rotations and like flanking people and trying to like get in and out of fights like it does actually become kind of tough for for even newer players i would say alawi is a good look for a zyra player i don't see why you would ever be sad playing alawi because basically you wind up just pushing into people harassing them with e and then letting the the ghosts and the tentacles do the majority of the work and you could pretty much carry games just by autopilot pushing you very rarely have to back down from fights unless you just like don't have alt like if you have alt, you could just march into people and like, like Garen is like, oh, I drew people to me. Watch me like bait this fight and run away, right? Allow he's like, I don't really bait that shit. Like I'm just gonna press E and like press R and then either I won or I didn't, right? So it's probably a good start point for you, I think. Uh, so I'm not sure. Like I know macro questions can kind of be hard to answer, but I think the situation comes up enough that I wonder about it. So yeah. like if you get like mid late game ish you get like a pick on the jungler or 
um, it's a big team fight, you win a big team fight. And the um, like mid tier two or like tier three towers up and barons up. How do you kind of decide like which major objective to go for? Like push down I mid weigh or heavily, go to I weigh heavily towards Baron personally. Um, I have DMX in here, so I'm gonna defer a lot. Harry's also pretty high rated as well. Um, I would say that I wait a pretty large portion of the time like see when you ask a macro question i like how you framed this because at least it seems like you understand that it's a bit of a gray area right like you don't want to yeah. just say i 100 will bear in every single time no matter what um but i will tell you that if there was like a frequency like if you just like pulled up my frequency of going to baron over like the tower the inhib i'm almost always going to choose the baron if i have a choice between one or the other and the reason why is because i feel like baron is such an insurance policy in a solo queue game whereas like an inhib doesn't actually do that much and the baron usually equates to an inhib how do you hire elo guys feel about this do i feel like i'm speaking does it sound like i'm speaking a different language here no it makes sense i mean uh if you can for fun uh on my profile uh, you know the tokens they added yeah. Uh, out of all my games uh, so far i have uh, like get the berm which is taking baron before 21 minutes uh, i have okay. told like uh, in a total 80 of them <laughs> because nice. literally baron is so strong and getting an inhibitor is it's not even worth it if you can't like do big stuff with it because remember i lost one challenge game which i i hated myself for it because we opened two inhibitors after like 60 minutes yep and they just flip like they flipped the entire game because they got free farm for the rest of the game because of super minions we lost all the lane minions we couldn't like like uh, we couldn't kill any minions because of the supers just pushing it in so always take baron first uh, also it's just more gold it's better stats it lets you help it's it help, like help you fight another time then you can take the inhibitor then you can take the turrets so it's like baron just gives you more stats like gold and just base stats in general so it will help you to get the inhibitor later and you can like utilize the first two uh super minion waves with the baron yeah, yeah like an go ahead harry in terms of like taking the inhib it just comes down to like okay we take inhib what can we do because we took the inhib if the answer is nothing then just don't take the inhib yeah i i find myself often like when i'm like snowballing really hard you'll see in a lot of my videos like even in low elo i'm afraid to take an early inhib like even if I'm just like super smurfing like in fucking gold or platinum or something, I'm a little afraid to do it because I feel like there's a very high chance that my team's just gonna push out and and basically just give shutdowns away. And then just like DMX said, like I might be getting my farm because I'm just gonna go to a different lane, but like the team might not be able to get the farm anymore. So you're basically you're you're turning off a valve. I I, I view each lane as like a is like a, a spigot of just like water flowing, right? When you take the inhib you're basically cutting off that flow of water but like a baron you're not really cutting off the flow of anything you could argue that like yeah the minions are going to naturally push because your team's ahead now and that's how the game's coded but at least you have access to some of the gold still like once that inhib goes like these guys have no choice but to just farm and teams in solo queue generally are just going to kind of leak deaths everywhere it's hard to get a collection of goobers together and like actually close a fucking game out quickly so you're just never going to want to take that inhib, uh, you know, over Baron. And you're especially never going to want to do it like when it's a real early game scenario. Just like keep the inhibs up. Um, I know this is kind of outside of the scope of what you asked, but like, I think it's relevant because like, you know, people just like rush inhibs down and they're like, oh, I got the inhib. It's like, well, that doesn't actually mean what you think it means. And I honestly feel like in a way taking inhibs feels like it should be buffed somehow. I don't really know how, but it just feels like it's not that valuable. You know? Uh, what is your best advice to stop lock screens? Obviously, you hated that in the E game. <laughs> Did, so... Has anybody played fucking StarCraft? I, I've been recommending the StarCraft I used to. Yes, sir. I used to, but I haven't played it since I was like 12. That is the, that is honest. Honestly, that is the best way to learn on lock screen without like tanking your, L, your MMR and your LP. Like, I mean, yeah, I guess you could go into games and like play against bots or whatever. But I feel like I always try to coach from the position of like, how did I learn? And I grew up playing RTS 
Um, so like I played like all these old ass RTS games. I played like this game called Red Alert. I played uh, yep. uh, Total cool. Annihilation. This fucking, uh, this fucking Rise game. of Nations was the one that I played a lot of. Rise of Nations. Uh, I'm one. also helping people to learn to play on the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he taught go. me how to do it actually. <laughs> yeah, like that... I don't play it fully locked, but I hold that space bar like it is a death grip. Yeah, so yeah, you're like on the roller coaster, scared shitless. I get it. That's, that's... Meanwhile, Watley and Harry are up uh, here sweating. <laughs> uh, if you can teach Fawn to play on uh, unlocked camera, you can teach anyone. She's a stubborn girl. She's very <laughs> resilient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she kind of reminds say... me of a, of a slug. I would say, I would uh, say that getting, getting. <laughs> I would say getting on the uh, the unlock cam is usually as simple as like playing some RTS because then normally when you go back to league you just kind of have this like epiphany of like wait wait why the fuck is my camera here like I was just playing a game where I had to control a goddamn army like why do I need to stare at my champion so much and I also just find in general like I know we're memeing on, on Watley or whatever it's also kind of a role thing too I mean some roles just lend themselves better to unlock camera also I know for example if you're a jungler and you're playing lock screen like you are fucking what role do you play jungle main uh yeah that you're fucking trolling i mean like, there's just no way that you can justify playing lock screen on that role and the reason is is because like i was saying like top doesn't necessarily need it unless like top is playing something with like a global that has to be constantly like aware right it's just right. because you wind up dueling like top lane winds up being more of like super smash brothers melee in top lane right whereas like jungle you're juggling the camps like dragging camps around but like you've got to be aware that like you need to maybe pull off of them and the only way that you could really be particularly good at that is by gathering the information reliably i just don't see a world where like you could do that with lock screen uh very well so yeah rts yeah, that's where i feel like i'm suffering the most yeah you probably are i would say just download starcraft grind starcraft okay. like literally play the yeah. campaign it's fun as fuck and i think it's free also yes, on i actually own bottom it. here uh, on the bottom of the server, there is a channel called Unlock the Camp Training. You can ping me there and I can help you get started with the basics of Unlocked Camp. This is perfect. Thank you, Turbo. Appreciate that. And thanks for your question. I had the same problem. Really? I was locked camp to Masters. Really? And then you stopped? Yeah, and then I unlocked my camp. <laughs> so now you I'm got, the, you got pretty bar. far, though, without, without uh, unlocking yeah, I was, it. Yeah, it was... It was only on mechanics. <laughs> how no how long ago was that? Uh, it was like the beginning of this year that I just like stopped it. Yeah, that was, that was a good choice. I mean, you basically just kind of cap your gameplay. It's the same thing I kind of bitch yeah. at myself about, like not using F keys. Like I still don't use F keys. I get my camera around a lot, but I kind of like, mm. I look at that, like the pro play. I'm like, yeah, probably not going to be pro niece. Because, like, it, I'm just not gaining enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's more info that I could yeah. probably be getting. Um, maybe if I play more uh, in three, I'll be more in, in, incentivized to do it. Yeah. Or something. But, yeah. I mean, I think mainly it's, like, people people forget how important, like, junglers in general forget how important the minimap is. I don't know how many times I've, like, helped or coached someone that just... They, they're not looking at the minimap and just miss, like, four opportunities. And, yeah people just need to put their eyes on the minimap when they're clearing because the camps are not gonna leave you it's, the camps are still gonna be there <laughs> yeah i think it's i think it's another good thing too that uh we're talking about this even from your perspective because it's like there's so many players that kind of get into these habits and like when you go to vod review like i swear that i play really well and then i'll look at a vod and i'll be like oh my god i didn't even see this mm -hmm. Right, like I didn't even yeah, see this guy exactly. was like low or like he took like a terrible trade and I could have just like went over and killed him if I had just been paying more attention. Yeah. Big Z, what's your question? Hello, so first off, thanks for having me. Um, no, so I'm a here. silver ADC main. Um, I play Kaisa, in case you can't tell from the profile picture. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, really sh <laughs> um, I really struggle with knowing what to look at on the map so like i really hone in on my lane and i feel like i mechanically i can do my lane but i feel like i struggle with understanding when i'm gonna get ganked and how to find the information for when i'm gonna get ganked and when my junk sorry when my jungler is gonna come gank me so i'm just struggling with that aspect so like getting out of my lane while also performing to the same level that i can play in my lane so generally so adcs often struggle with this mainly because it's so fucking obnoxious playing bot lane in general because you have to manage two you have to manage like spacing for two champions the entire time while collecting all your farm right 
I think the biggest thing that you have to remember is like, I, I always wind up telling AD carries that like, we, we obviously will push for level spikes, but at the same time, like be aware that the best, the best way to play against ganks when you're new is to just build giant waves and die in those waves. I know it sounds really inty, but when you're new, you gotta just build the confidence of like, okay, I'm just slow pushing here, which means just last hitting. And then when the gank shows up, don't like shit yourself and just run away. Ask yourself, because I see this so much in coaching, it's ridiculous. Ask yourselves like, do, am I just sitting on a big wave right now? Because if I am, I could probably just fight it out. Um, I oftentimes get players, like when I, when I coach, I see them like, they'll be they'll be pushing out and i'll see them just randomly ward and i'm just like well what does warding really do here because you're probably not going to pay that much attention to it and are you really going to like step off of the wave as you're losing like three or four minions when you could just crash the wave and then run away and if the gank shows up it's not like the enemy team is going to step over the wave so i guess what i'm trying to say is it's less about at your level because you said you're silver right correct yeah i think it's less about at your level of, of like uh being aware of like jungle ganks and like pathing and i think it's more about just like managing big waves and making sure that you're making the call of like oh my wave is massive i'm just gonna die with it i would literally rather die fighting on this wave than run away and like give up the play or to not incentivize the enemy team to fight over a giant wave does all that make sense i hope it does no thank you i just don't want you to overcomplicate it like when you're a newer player like because a lot of people try to get uh, basically this game will very quickly turn into decision paralysis where you start thinking about all these like possibilities and you just can't you, you won't like you just won't be able to to manage those and it also makes it so that you have very low confidence right you every play you see you're like oh my god i didn't expect the jungler to be here now i'm gonna run backwards and like give up the entire play and it's like I, honestly i would rather you just learn to fight it out because that way uh, you get your mechanical ability up to the point of where, because I can just, I'm telling you right now, I can pretty much just autopilot in low elo. Pretty much all the high elo guys here can autopilot in low elo and just push giant waves in and fight and just mechanically outplay. And that's kind of where you would rather be. Less of, less about, oh shit, where's the enemy jungler? You know, what's this fucking, what's a lease and clear look like, right? Like you're just not gonna know that and you're not gonna really retain it. No, no worries. He said he's a big fan and he's really happy to be here and he wants to thank you for doing this. This is Power Grid. He said his question is from a jungler's perspective in the early game uh, for about the first things, first two heralds and drags. How do you determine which objective to favor and focus over the other for your specific team? Um, I would say nine times out of ten in low elo, if you can snowball, basically... <laughs> In my experience in low elo if you can snowball like some sort of big stupid bruiser carry usually that winds up doing pretty well and that means normally i like being on the rift side usually and i guess part of that is i wind up being the big stupid bruiser carry and i like rifts right um however the higher up you go i think it's pretty universally uh agreed upon right now that you would rather be snowballing a bot lane uh mainly because it's kind of a meta around bot lane at the moment um i do think the rift the added value on the rift is nice but it's still not enough to offset like i was saying earlier i was talking to a lulu player it's like if you get a giant like adc with a lulu protecting them i've already experienced this multiple times on korea there's like nothing you can fucking do if they do it right um so yeah it's usually better to to snowball bot lane if you've if you're confident that like the bot laners can do something but generally speaking for me i like playing towards rift because i get more gold that way I don't like playing towards dragons because I feel like I get less gold and then I'm relying on on goober ADCs who are just going to throw whatever lead you give them anyways. With, at least when you're giving like bruisers and tanky players leads, um, they just become like stat sticks. And I find that it's pretty hard to fuck that up. You know? Um, yeah, what do you think, DMX? Yeah, I, I mean, me personally, since I'm a Velvet player, I always play around the Herald. Um, mm, interesting. But See, one thing, one thing to realize is that I agree definitely on the get the bot lane ahead because that's just the entire meta right now. That it's a two, it's a two champion lane where basically you have the opportunity of like getting an ADC that's from, let's say Draven, let's say Callista, Severe, Ezreal, something that's good at sustaining in lane alone. 
if you get them ahead, let's say two kills, three kills for Herald, you can easily have the support roam to Herald with you. Uh, and mm. I feel like the first Herald especially is just such an important objective, like especially for Belvet because of the true form, but in general because of the gold value. Getting a first turret gives a lot to your team because it opens up a lane which like makes your entire team more flexible. They can like roam around, okay bottom is behind, they move top side, we've got top turret or like vice versa. Um, yeah. Mid moves bot, bot moves mid. So I think that Herald is the main objective generally because the games are going kind of quickly. And it's also depending on the dragon. Is it the mountain dragon? You rarely fucking take that dragon if it's the first one. Because it's so tanky, it's so slow to take it, and you need something that really damages it. If you don't have something like Master V that really can like damage it, then you rather just focus other stuff. Because you are wasting like one minute on the dragon. So so yeah, you really have to plan your lanes around the objectives. Uh, because spending time on an objective and then dying, for example, to me jungler. It's like, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than that. Yeah, I, I, I like this a lot. And I've been noticing in, in my games as well, just kind of getting back into it and grinding a bit more. It does feel like taking dragons, it just feels so fucking slow. And like, you have to have like, it, it almost feels like, uh, it almost feels like you have to have like a smooth ace on a bot lane to like, you know what I mean? To actually like rotate over yeah. quickly. Cause otherwise it's, it's exactly what you said. You, if you try to take it, they spawn. It's literally like those level one things that we just did. They spawn and run right back at it again. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck did I even yeah. do? I didn't even earn anything. This is a whack. So yeah, that's great. Exactly. Um, hey niece. Hi. I uh, love your content. Thank you. Um, so I have a champion question. Sure. Um, so um, I know that you always said that you should pick a champion and focus on it mm -hmm. and i did so but i'm um, lately i've been feeling that um keep playing the same champion it seems really uh, benefiting me and it's really frustrating what champion so i don't know if i should change champion you said vi um yeah are you playing so you're playing vi jungle what exactly is frustrating about it um so i also play nocturne second pick but um, I feel like Vi has so many weaknesses in the jungle and she's so easily in invaded and if she misses her Q and That's like, that was that was what I wanted to hear. The uh, yeah, like, the yeah. missing the Q portion. I was kind of waiting for that to come through. So one of the things yeah. that I caution players a lot about with Vi is that Vi is a very like uh she's an easy champion to fuck up, no offense. How long have you been playing? Um, for many years, but I just started jungling this season. Okay, cool. So yeah, Vi's a little tricky because I, I like Vi as well. There's a lot of little funky mind games that go into it. I don't want to discourage you and say like drop, you know, you have to drop Vi or whatever. The main thing that probably causes you to miss cues a lot of the time is that you're not doing a great job of hiding your intentions. So for example, if I'm playing Vi, I always want to come from the fog of war, right? Or if I'm, if I'm telegraphing my cue very obviously, I want to try to come up right. with ways to be creative about it. And I can maybe... Uh, maybe when I do the, the big picture talk about like uh, abilities, maybe I can remember to show this quickly. But like the idea is that you charge your Q and you can do like this little like wiggly movement where you like fade away, move forward, fade away, move forward. You almost kind of have to get in people's heads a bit because if you just straight telegraph like I'm Vi and I'm going to throw this fucking Q, like anybody with a brain is just going to run away from you, right? But if you do this little spacing juke where you just kind of like move forward and back really quickly, you can normally get opponents to like kind of walk into it. Um, but it's usually a combination of one of those things. Either you're telegraphing the fuck out of the Q, right? And you're just walking at people mm -hmm. in a straight line and they just go, oh shit, and run away. And you don't have flash to secure it or you just airball the, the flash or whatever. Or the alternative is you aren't using vision uh, when you should be. So like whenever I play Vi, like I basically always make it a point to never be seen when I'm, a, when I'm going to engage. And like never be seen because that is what makes or breaks that particular champion because like you you pretty much singled it out you can't miss the queue you actually like can't fucking miss it or you die so often or you just don't finish kills so often you had nocturne as like a secondary it's like nocturne is very similar except like with nocturne you know it's a lot easier to hit the abilities because the queue is a little bit wider 
right? And then Nocturne turns into a fear after the fact. And sometimes with Vi, you almost have to hit two Qs or you have to queue away from a fight after the fact. So it's a little bit more skill expressive. I, you know, I don't want you to drop your champion if you enjoy it, but I want you to truly like ask yourself, maybe going through the VODs, like a good trick is to go into the VODs, look at the enemy yep. team's vision and see how you look to them. Okay, yeah. Right? So like, they're gonna cool. see, they're gonna see you like, I bet that I'm gonna see you walking out of bushes and like really telegraphing a lot of your action when you could have like taken maybe a different route maybe you could have hit in the bush longer and baited your team a little bit longer things like that are normally what show up with vi players does all this make sense yeah totally um, good thank you so much thanks for being here i appreciate the question